Chip makers were the key to the rally here over the past year that got to all time records last month and kind of fizzled out since. Let's bring in Angelo Zeno joining us from CFRA, Senior Equity Analyst, covering a bunch of those chip makers. Uh, so real just quick, just Angelo, over the last couple of weeks here, how come our big hero of this fresh bull rally all of a sudden just kind of fizzled out? In terms of NVIDIA? Well, chip makers, you know, you know I'm looking at the SMH oh, okay, ETF. Okay. You know, we got to 165 last month. We had this big breakout move, and, and they were fading it while everybody wants to go and buy the Russell. Like, well, what's the deal? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think it's one of those things where, you know, you, you kind of saw a, a melt-up in a lot of these names, especially in the most recent kind of rally that we've had. And, um, you know, rightfully so, but you've kind of baked in a lot of the good news, I think, going into calendar 2024. And now you've kind of had, you've, you've got to digest a lot of those gains, right? I mean, but when you kind of look, um, it's really interesting when you kind of look at what's going on within semi specifically, um, similar to what you're seeing kind of to your point in, in some of the, the Russell names and what have you, you're actually seeing a lot of the, the lower quality names within, um, you know, semis actually start to pick up steam and hold up a little bit better. Some of the names within areas like autos and industrials that might have gotten hit a little bit harder after Q3 earnings season. A lot of kind of those, those smaller mid-cap type names on the analog side of things, you know, look like the, some of the momentum has continued a little bit stronger here than some of those more, you know, larger data center type names like the NVIDIAs and the ANDs of the world would seem like now they're taking, you know, somewhat of a breather. Yeah, well said. And maybe as a little uh, small example of that today, the chip makers down 2% as a whole, but Texas Instruments, an old school analog name that got thrown to the wayside this summer, is up. So uh, a little intrasector rotation. Uh, one, though, that has been a little bit frustrating, I feel like, uh, since the debut was ARM, but we're kind of back to where we were uh, at the IPO. You just started covering it. Tell us about it what do you think yeah i mean we do have a hold recommendation we initiated with a hold on it and uh 12 month target price of about 65 dollars you know in our view there's probably not much upside to this name it's a great story to be honest with you i mean when you kind of look at historically what's driven this company it has been the smartphone side of things they've got over 99 percent percent share there clearly they're a big player within um, apple um, but you would, you know, the real story here for ARM is really kind of um, the AI story, and it's still kind of a small piece of the pie here. But as companies like an NVIDIA continue to grow in the data center um, with their CPUs as well as their GPUs, um, you know, ARM based kind of the ARM based architecture is believed to start gaining share within the data center. And that's a, an area that's historically been driven by the x86 art architecture, which, you know, right now is being driven by Intel and um, AMD. So as you can continue to start seeing share gain on that side of things, as well as other areas of the market, industrials and autos, clearly a great content story there where you're going to see more ARM based chips there as AI becomes, you know, a bigger theme over there over time. That kind of gives more credence to the the ARM story. But that said, um, it's still largely a, a smartphone story right now. When you look at the multiple right now, high 30s um, PE on a 2025 basis, um, that's why we have a hold recommendation. But the margin story, the recurring revenue stream of this company, because it is kind of more royalty licensing based in nature, um, warrants a, a much higher premium relative to what you see across the semiconductor space. Hmm. Okay, so uh, right now that uh, a premium gets you where? Uh, a $65 price target, a few bucks higher than where we're at. Valuation-wise, can it hold its own with the, with the frothiest stuff out there? Well, that's, that's the thing, right? I think there's definitely some risk out there in terms of holding this name, which is kind of why we're on the mm. sidelines on it. We love the growth story attached to it, but um, if, if we're an investor right now, what we're telling our investors is wait for the name to get hit. If you see a 20-25% if, if pullback in this name, I think that provides a potential uh, enhanced opportunity to potentially get in on a great secular opportunity with great margins, with a great recurring revenue stream. But at these multiples, um, it just looks like things that just appear full to us okay so it sounds like maybe a uh, buy the dips uh, situation perhaps uh, if I could kind of uh, yeah uh, you know phrase it that way all right uh, how about micron 
I want to talk about kind of the cyclical uh, memory side, but obviously Micron's got a splash of uh, growth in there too. Been pretty steady up and up uh, all year, but we've seen some of the broader economic data start to soften. How does Micron now fit into that kind of more cyclical uh, you know, wave of demand? Yeah. We, so we like the, the Micron story right now. We do like the memory side of things. I mean, it, it definitely is, is not for the faint of heart. I mean, it's a name where you've got to kind of, you know, be willing to sit through the volatility there. It was a name that really bottomed in 2022, and the fundamentals continue to get worse through into mid-2023. Uh, and what we saw, you know, this year was some significant capacity cuts, specifically from the big player out there in Samsung. That kind of gave you the green light to really get into Micron stock. Um, in terms of where the risk is for Micron, it really is on the China side of things. But that's a well understood story at this point in time. It's been talked about for several quarters now. They're articulating it, um, letting investors know where we kind of stand in terms of the, the China story. But more importantly, what we're seeing now is supply demand starting to kind of firm up. We're seeing pricing start to creep up and there is a, that's going to we think continue through 2024 a big reason for that is because um, you're not getting any of these major players that are going to increase uh, capacity significantly until we see profitability start to significantly improve and that's what we've pretty much heard across the board from most of these uh, memory players and what we do have now with micron is a great secular story in terms of high bandwidth memory that's on the DRAM side of things that's about 70 percent of their business that being DRAM. so micron really being the, the best positioned here in terms of this high bandwidth memory play as ai kind of ramps up here in 2024 on the data center side of things they've been behind a lot of the other players in the market but for us that represents an opportunity so we like the name a lot it is more of a value play relative to others in the in the semiconductor space so um, almost kind of goes with that theme with some of those you know maybe smaller mid-cap names out there that have kind of been left behind okay that's exactly what i was wondering if this is more kind of the value camp so answer that question yeah. uh one that maybe was uh more outright disappointing ending with marvell down three and a half percent market didn't seem to like its earnings didn't seem terrible uh but it did kind of seem like if you were hoping for this to be a little mini nvidia uh, that it didn't work out. But it seems like from uh, your analysis, you think it, it still has got a chance. Yeah, I mean, we're holding on to this thing. Well, we're, we continue to have a strong buy recommendation. It is kind of one of our top AI type names out there. Not as strong of a story right now as the NVIDIA's or AMD's of the world. Um, or even the Broadcoms of the world. But it is still a name that we kind of, you know, keep within that bucket. Um, we've definitely been disappointed in terms of the story here for Marvell. And it really kind of seems like um, it's been one shoe dropping after another. They, they're among the least exposed in terms of the consumer side of things. But when you kind of look at what they've done over the last couple of years, um, we love kind of how they've positioned themselves. But um, what's happened over the last couple of quarters is we've kind of seen a shoe drop in terms of the storage side of things. Um, that's what we saw happen in, through most of 2023. Now what we're seeing happening is another shoe drop in terms of their carrier business. A lot of the 5G infrastructure spend out there is uh, dropping significantly here over the next couple of months. You're looking at about you know 40 to 50 percent sequential decline. So they're holding on. They've been holding on to a little bit too much inventory on that side of things, and that needs to flush itself out. The great thing is that that AI story is working out very well. You look at that data center business; it is accelerating. It grew about 21 percent last quarter it's going to grow north at 30 percent um this quarter so um you know it is accelerating but um you know we need kind of these other markets to really kind of um stabilize and bottom out here and we do think that's going to happen here over the next four to six months it's just taking a lot longer than we anticipated to play out and you now need to the ai story to continue to hold up as these other markets start to bottom out. And I think that's when the Marvell story plays out. So it's gonna be more of a 2024 story in our view. All right, got it. So giving them some more time. Uh, market uh, getting a little impatient though, uh, but it seems like the whole move is uh, across the sector that we got arm down, I got uh, Micron down too. So uh, thanks Angelo for the analysis, very much appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Very helpful to keep uh, each story straight here for the different chip makers.